Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to introduce you to Corey Langford, our LWD technical advisor who performs interpretation and processing of our LWD data. There's also a technical interface to operations and the business development team to solve customers' unique geosteering challenges. His 12-year-old field career began working in the field as a mud logger, but eventually moved on to work as an LWD field engineer, running full suite of logging tools across the continental U.S. After gaining fundamental insights working in the field, Corey moved into a role as a regional petrophysicist, where he learned the fundamentals of log evaluation and geosteering to support LWD utilization. He has extensive experience with both unconventional and conventional reservoirs across, across the lower 48 and specializes in LWD image interpretation. Corey. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you everybody for joining us today. I uh, have a short presentation here to introduce everybody to our, uh, our bit sub LWD tool. So it's an at bit sub that goes below the motor and above the bit. It's uh, one of the shortest ones on the market and it has azimuthal gamma ray inclination less than two feet from the bit. So with that, I will go ahead and share my screen here. You got it? And we'll go ahead and start. So as Ben mentioned, I'm the LWD Technical Advisor for Scientific Drilling. Day-to-day uh, -day operations just include interpretation and processing of the log and in, log information that we're getting in real time and then also post well. So just kind of a quick agenda. We'll do a quick tool overview of the bit sub sub itself and we'll move on to drilling applications and geosteering applications with some real world examples and specific case studies here in the US. So tr traditionally, gamma ray uh, sensors are, are typically located above the mud motor. Uh, you know, a, a typical gamma ray sensor is also sound based. So if you can kind of see here in these diagrams, we have a gamma ray sensor above the mud motor. It's sound based about 30 to 40 feet behind the bit. And for a non azimuthal gamma ray sound based, you can see here that the scintillation detector is centralized with these rubber centralizers inside of the bore of the drill collar. So if you got to think from a from a natural occurring gamma ray radiation standpoint, it has to go through drilling mud, through drill through the drilling collar, through more drilling mud before it actually gets to the scintillation detector itself. Uh, so each one of these heavy mediums actually attenuates the gamma ray signal. Um, and in order to get a probe-based azimuthal gamma ray sensor, we actually have to add some azimuthal shielding or tungsten shielding. And we have to make the size of the crystal a little bit smaller. So you can see here just in our non azimuthal it's an inch by four inch scintillation crystal. In our azimuthal, we, we size it down a little bit to allow for that tungsten shielding. So basically, whenever we size down the crystal, we also lose a little bit of the uh, accuracy of the measurement itself. So you can kind of see here that the, uh, the bit sub is actually a collar mounted tool with a larger crystal. So we're actually removing some of the attenuation that uh, is in the drilling mud here and we have a larger crystal so we're actually able to get a real-time quadrant or four bin image or eight bin and then 16 bins and recorded so you can see here as the tools rotating we're actually bending the data into either four eight or 16 bins and here's actually a, a schematic of the bit sub itself i'll go into a little bit more on the specs of it but you can just see here everything's included in this short sub that's going to go below the motor. So here's just another schematic of where it's actually placed. Uh, we're talking 29 inches, you know, the total length of the sub and our bit to sensor distances are going to be about 16 inches behind the bit. And uh, some of those real time outputs that we have available for pulsing up in real time is actually going to be our azimuthal gamma ray. As I mentioned before, we could do quadrant eight bin or 16. Uh, continuous inclination measurement, which is key for identifying any type of build or walk trends, and then also triaxial vibration and RPM. So it's truly an at bit sub because we have our sensor distances just less than 16 inches back. So some of the key applications for the bit sub tool, uh, you know, not only are we providing real-time drill and dynamics and it's mute the gamma ray at the bit, but 
you know, we can actually use these measurements for maybe geo stopping. Say we are looking for a coring or a casing point, and we do not want to cut too far into the target formation. We can actually use this ad bit measurement for that application. If we have a tight geo steering window, you know, say less than 10 feet up and down, which I have a, a, an example I'll show later of a seven and a half foot up and down window in the Permian Basin. Uh, this would be a, a very good application for that just because we are reducing the bit to sensor distance. Say we have a complex structural geology setting. Uh, say there's lots of faults, folds, or just uh, major dip changes along the lateral that we, we want to identify in real time and make a changes for uh, in our geosteering program to account for that and stay in our increase our target percentage. And then also identifying gamma ray markers with similar APIs. So say we have a, a shell above and below uh, with very similar API counts. And we need to determine if we're actually cutting up into the top shell or down into the bottom shell. This is a, a very good application for azimuthal gamma. And then if you're using it from the bit sub, obviously having that less than two feet from the bit, you'll be able to minimize the amount of time that you'd be out of zone. Uh, some drilling applications, you know, we have a well bore tortuosity. We can reduce that with actually our at bit inclination. Uh, so actually while we're rotating or sliding, we're getting this measurement here. And I have a, a, a good example here later on where we actually, you know, we're able to see that the, the uh, well bore was walking up or building up in inclination. We saw it in real time and actually we're able to put in a slide before it started building too much and actually getting out of zone. So it was just a very proactive approach just using the inclination measurement. And a couple other things, if we want to, you know, prolong the mud motor hours down hole, you know, we can actually mon actively monitor the bit RPM and stick slip measurement to make sure that we're not putting the mud motor through any undue stress. And whereas in the past, you know, we've looked at rotary steerable systems for, for these tight geo steering target windows, just to reduce the bit to sensor distance with this ad bit sub, with inclination and gamma, we can actually uh, maybe not have to run a rotary steerable system just for these tight geosteering target windows. And you can kind of see here just this little diagram, as I mentioned before. This is uh, the bit sub uh, quadrant image where we have 40 or 90 degree increments, and then we have eight bin and then also 16 bin as well. So one of the key applications or, or one of the key uh, pre-job modeling that we need to do is actually looking at the bending moments and contact forces all along the BHA to ensure that, you know, we're actually establishing these operational limits for the tool, whereas we can establish before the run the max bend angle of the motor, the max dogleg severity that we would want to put the, the tool through, and then the max RPM that we would want to spin it in real time. This is actually a very key uh, input you know, to ensure that we have a successful run, uh, just to kind of go go into a little bit of a story. There are other ad bit measurements out there uh, that don't have this this uh, pre job modeling support. So whenever we've talked with with some people who have who've had bad experiences with ad bit subs, is because maybe the the proper pre job analy uh, engineering analysis was not done. And we can honestly say that we have not twisted off any of these bit subs down hole. And a lot of that has to do with the pre-job engineering that, that we have. And we have a very good, robust model. As you can see here, it's just this SPE paper uh, that our engineering group wrote. Uh, you can just see a modeled versus measured uh, bending moment. So basically, we, we did the model, and then we actually ran a wad tob and vibration measurement in that well to see how it measured the measured versus modeled. And you see a very good agreement, which is kind of goes to show the validity of the engineering model. But we still have a, a pin and connection below the motor. So it does limit us on bend angle and dog leg severity. And we've, you know, through the through the two years that we've had the tool out, you know, a lot of the requests from our customers were, you know, we want to eliminate that connection. So basically we have a, a new setup for the tool and we have an extended mud motor mandrel and we we're actually able to fit the sensors of the bit sub within that uh, extended mandrel. And so not only does it eliminate that pin in connection as you see here. So, you know, if we eliminate that connection with this new one, with this new mandrel setup, we can actually increase the maximum dog leg limitations that we can put the tool through. 
we can increase the maximum top drive RPM that we could we could run the tool at, and then it also decreases the bit to bend length. So you can just see here where we have a Titan 22 motor with the bit sub collar below. We're looking at about a 70 inch bit to bend. With this new, new mandrel, we have a 64 inch bit to bend. So that actually shortens the effective length of the bit sub collar to only 23 inches. And you can see here that our bit to sensor distances remain the same at 16 inches. So we still get in both setups, you know, a inclination in azimuthal gamma less than two feet from the bit. Another one, uh, another consideration that we have to take into account is the the mud parameters or mud uh, mud properties. The way that the bit sub communicates to the MWD tool is it uses an EM short hop, and basically that signal hops around the mud motor, so we don't have a wired motor mud motor that's that transmit the signal. It's actually, uh, you know, it's a, a set of antennas and receivers that will you know emit the signal into the mud and the formation travels back to the receiver and we're actually able to pick it up with our mwd tool and then that mwd tool actually pulses that data up from the bit sub you know via whether em or mud pulse telemetry so the mud properties have you know do have an effect on the uh, capability of that em short hop and what we've seen in our modeling and real world scenarios is it's a very extremely reliable and oil-based mud and water-based mud with low chloride. So you can just see here on this graph on the right, we have a uh, chloride content along with temperature. So if we have the chloride content of the mud, we can actually get a mud resistivity. And then we just look at the, the, the contrast between the formation and the mud resistivity to ensure that we're gonna get good signal. So here's, a, here's another example of one of the outputs of the tool. And it's going to be our traxial vibration and RPM system. Uh, you can see here, this is uh, just showing a log here. It's, it's a time-based log with all the major drilling parameter uh, components. We have block height, uh, gamma ray, ROP. We also have, you know, hook load, weight on bit, top drive RPM, torque. So basically, we're just looking at how these drilling parameters affect the vibration levels. And the vibration levels are pulsed up in a very easy traffic light system that the the MWD operators are constantly seeing. So you can just see here whenever green is is being shown that we have very low vibrations and you know not much to worry about. But you can see the graph on the right here when we're pulling off bottom and kind of working through a little bit of a tight hole, we can see that the vibrations actually go up into the red. So at this point, the MWD operator would contact the directional driller and actually try to try to change the drill parameters any way that they can in order to minimize the amount of vibration that the tool is seeing. So moving on to the uh, case studies. So my favorite part is because we get to show some of the actual data from the tool. And uh, this is actually a, a really good image log from the Permian Basin, so the Wolf Camp A shell lateral. So just to kind of walk you all through the plot from left to right, we have our MWD gamma ray in green. We have our bit sub gamma ray in blue. We have our ROP in black dashed. And then we have surface RPM in red. So we actually can see where we're sliding. And then we have continuous inclination in blue. We have sliding inclination as these green dots. This is all coming from the bit sub. And then we have a bit sub static inclination. So we can actually pulse up. It's a more accurate measurement uh, from the inclination measurement above the bit that whenever it is static, obviously we do get a, a better measurement. So we can actually see the difference you know, identify any type of trends as far as uh, you can see here, just the static inclinations running a little bit lower than the continuous, and we can actually account for that while we're drilling. So in this particular example, you know, we're drilling along, it's, it's, it's building up a little bit of inclination, and then we start seeing on the images in the up and down gamma ray that we're actually cutting up section. So just kind of a good rule of thumb is if we, if we see a smile, it means we're cutting up. So you can see these these two smiles here on the image. This is actually a, a two sector real time image. So we're just pulsing up, up and down. And then this is actually being confirmed by our 16 sector gamma ray image in memory. So a very good correlation between the two. We saw this measurement, uh, the, the geosteering group made an account for 
that was actually the top of their target. So you can actually see here that we slid down for the for the next stand and we actually were able to cut back down into zone after we put in a full slide. Which is then signified on the images as a frown. And if you see a frown on the images, you can pretty much assume that we are cutting down stratigraphically. And again, this is uh, also confirmed you know, on the recorded images. So a very good correlation between the two, the real time and the versus the recorded. And a very good correlation with the inclination measurement that we're seeing from the tool in this example. So in the last example I showed, we saw the gamma ray fluctuating anywhere between 60 to 70 API and very good clear dips on the image. Uh, this this kind of goes to show it's a different part of the well. Uh, same same well, it's a Wolf Camp 8 shell lateral from the Permian Basin, but where we don't see a gamma ray change of up to 60 API. In this case, so the log is set up the exact same. So we have our bit sub gamma in blue, MWD gamma in green. We can see our, our continuous inclination slowly building, and then we can see that correlating to us actually cutting up section on the images. And we're actually able to see this dip on the image of cutting up section in real time whenever we only see a gamma ray increase of about 10 API. So that just kind of goes to show the uh, accuracy of the measurement itself and some of the minimum amount of changes in the gamma ray that we would need in order to see a dip. And you can see here it actually is confirmed from the from the recorded images that we were cutting up section here if it's not as clear on the real time for some for anybody. And then as we saw that we started to slide down on the very next connection. So just kind of a quick overview of the reliability of the tool that we've seen so far. So first run that we uh, we launched the tool it was in May of 2017. Uh, it was kind of the, the very very beginnings of the tool. It didn't have the S the gamma ray function, but it was mainly just a total gamma and inclination measurement. And then the azimuth the gamma ray came later that year. But we are currently still running it. So you can see here the last run we have is April 2020. We, we have a job ongoing right now. Uh, this, these stats were actually updated um, last week. So we have 157, a little over 157,000 feet drilled, about 2,000 drilling hours, and a total of about 57 runs. You can actually see kind of where we've been running the tool here in the US. You know, we have some Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, California, uh, Canada, and also the Northeast. And what we've seen is out of those 57 runs, we have a 93% success rate, which is very good considering that, you know, we, we are putting the sub below the motor, uh, which is can be a very damaging place for, for any type of sub. So it needs to be robust. And uh, we feel that we, we have a the uh, case history to show that, you know, the uh, ruggedness of the tool is, is very, very reliable. So that concludes the uh, bits of webinar presentation. Uh, just want to thank everybody for your time and uh, open it up for any questions. And uh, just also put the uh, the website addresses for, for anybody that's looking for any you know some more information, whether it be case studies or uh, specific specifications of, of the tool. You know we have our websites listed here on the screen, so that way you can uh, reach out to anybody that that uh, at Scientific for for more information, or actually log on to our website and actually. Uh, pull the data that's that we have listed. So thank you very much.